Hey, what's up, guys? It's Malvision, and today we're going to talk about Shadow Priest and 10.1 for all you guys who want the wiggly chain shoulder pads. Because I don't raid anymore, my fun comes from leveling different classes and learning about them. And so when I level up a new character and I want to learn it, I hit the Mage Tower because it's a really good way to learn the different interrupts, the CCs, the movement speed. All of that stuff comes into play in Mage Tower. So I leveled up my Shadow Priest recently, and it just made sense to hit the Mage Tower right away. So my main reason for wanting to make this video is that I was following the Wowhead guide on uh, Mage Tower for Shadow Priest. And like everyone else, I just copied the talents, export, didn't even look at it, import them in here. Blah, blah, blah. And there's two talents right off the bat that are not selected. And, you know, so like I don't really know much about Shadow Priest, so I just filled it in. But really, there really should be Whispering Shadows. This is what gives Shadow Crash the ability to spread your dots, your two most important dots across all the ads. And that's just going to help you burn stuff. So that was a big one. The other thing is just looking at the Priest side, like it has Leap of Faith and Master Spell and Improved Master Spell. Like, this is three wasted talents because you're never, you're not gripping anybody else. You're not going to dispel anybody. So there's just a bunch of stuff I think could be better. Like you could, um, put it into your flash heal in case because I was experiencing near the last phase, you know, you take quite a bit of damage. You might as well put these points into something that you're actually going to use. So buffing your power word shield, uh, to like help you. Cause you're going to be using that all the time, uh, to get around quickly. So anyway, I just, it, it basically meant that, you know, I had to do a little bit more digging obviously, which is fine. So the build that I arrived at that I was quite happy with, like, again, I took away these points. I put it into my flash shield. Uh, it makes it, my flash shield stronger up to 50%. I put uh, points into power word shield because again, I use that so much. And so, you know, I'll, I'll link this uh, build, but ultimately, you know, I just went for, I really like the apparitions, like the, this, the ghosts that come out of you and just like deal damage that just psychologically is really cool to me. So I wasn't really focused on single target. I was actually focused on uh, AOE. So yeah, I went for, I think probably something that's like, again, this was just my thinking. I have no idea if like this is the best, but it worked for me. So I'm just sharing this. So I like the idea of Devouring Plague causes your Shadow Word, Pain, and Vampiric Touch to deal damage 80% faster on all, all targets. To me, it sounds like it's going to kill stuff faster, right? Because if it's going to take faster, then things should die faster, right? And I'm just applying the dots like with Shadow Crash anyway. So, And I feel like it worked. I felt like things were just melting, so it felt really smooth to work with this build. I uh, put all these points here into Vampiric Touch, does 30% additional damage. Yeah, honestly, this echo thing, no idea. Psychologically, again, I think it made me feel better, but... Oh, I forgot to mention that I didn't take Void Torrent, like a lot of the builds recommend, uh, ultimately arriving at Idol of Cthune, because it just seemed like a lot of points to me, and I don't I don't like Void Torrent, especially in this particular Mage Tower challenge. There's a lot of movement. I don't even want to stop and cast anything if I don't have to. So I didn't need it. I just didn't need it, boys. Like, I, uh, this build was very comfortable to me. If you really feel like you need extra uh insanity to like devouring plague or something sure go for it but like it just meant that you couldn't take all this other stuff that i thought was just more uh what i needed to beat the challenge myself all right in terms of macros i do use a couple so these are macros that are kind of like generic for all classes but whenever you have a thing that you need to place in the ground it can be really nice to just have a mouse over so wherever your mouse is hovering that's where it's going to go so i use this slash cast at cursor uh, for the interrupt, I did use silence. Uh, actually, I actually use this one. So I just use uh, target hand from beyond. That's like the big hand that you have to interrupt and then cast silence, like really, really simple. And honestly, the cast is so slow. You don't even need this. Um, that cast is really fine. Like compared to the other mage towers, you don't really need this, but it did kind of help a little bit. Uh, one that I really like, uh, again, cast at cursor is angelic feathers. So like when you're putting your feathers down, instead of having to click uh, where they're going, you know, you just put them where your cursor is. So it, once you get used to this, this feels really organic, like it's really quick and fast. Uh, what else? A void shift, or sorry, dispersion. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's just a cancel aura. So it's a uh, slash cancel aura d dispersion. So basically you go into dispersion, but like, let's say, you know, the danger is gone and you want to get out of it right away. That's what that does. It just lets you cancel it early so you can get back to fighting. Uh, Vampiric, Vampiric Touch, mouse over macro, pretty simple, you know, just put your mouse over. Did I use this on the kill attempt? Maybe, maybe not. I think, again, the majority of my dots were just put on by uh, Shadow Crash. And I think that's pretty much it for the macros. It's all you really need. In terms of, like, interrupts compared to, like, the Windwalker one, uh, or even the uh, Demonology Warlock challenge, this one really is nothing. Like, the only thing you have is that hand, super easy to deal with. In terms of gear, I'm honestly not super geared. Like I only 
just leveled up recently. Um, I do have four set though, so that probably played a big part. Uh, I only have one embellished. I'm just using the belt. Uh, I do have the chest embellished, but I didn't use it. I just ended up using four set. Uh, in terms of gems, I don't even have three gems in my neck, which probably could have helped made it easier. Uh, in terms of trinket, I just had, I have beacon of the beyond and Vessel of Searing Shadow, but in the end, I actually went with the Tried and True Ravage Seed Pod. This is just a really good trinket I find for these uh, these Mage Tower challenges because, you know, there's usually going to be an element of needing to heal yourself back up, and like, especially like near the end, you're probably taking a lot of damage focusing on the boss, and I just like having the Leech Pool uh, Puddle. It didn't statistically, like when I look at the, uh, the logs after, like it didn't actually do that much healing to me, but... I just like having something that I can plop down. The ads have to walk through it and it deals damage every time they're in it. So this is just a good haste uh, trinket to have. You can go get it over at Emerald Nightmare. Uh, kill the first boss on any difficulty and chances are you drop. Like every time I kill that for my characters, it drops. So nothing really fancy in terms of the gear. And then lastly for consumables, I was just using rank two Howling Rune. I used some uh, deviled eggs. I had drums and I was using rank two ultimate power potion and a verse flask. That was it. All right, so here's my actual kill attempt and I'm just gonna let this play in the background as I say a few things, a couple tips to help you out. I have a couple things that helped me that I learned after 20 wipes. Uh, number one, don't kill Karam too fast. Number two, don't stand in the voids too early because the ads will get to you. Number three, don't let the hand cast twice. And number four, save psychic scream and void tendrils for emergencies when you do need to soak a, a void zone and then the ads are right there beside you. So you have to get really comfortable with how close the ads can get to you before they kill you. So this first phase is really easy. Don't save or don't spend your cooldowns. Uh, just, just dot them up, take it slow. There's no urgency at this point. Uh, at 33%, this guy will phase. He goes immune and then the boss in the middle becomes the target targetable. And the boss in the middle is the one that you really want to focus on. So there's no, I mean, I'm sure there's like some stuff you can do, like really think about it. The area, the active area is pretty large. You can go even behind the rocks to kite this guy around. But I didn't really find it too much of a benefit to have him be like really far away. I kind of want him to be nearby so that I can DPS him when that time comes. So here we are in phase two and popping everything, popping my void guy my cooldowns, and I'm waiting for the ads to get closer before I drop my Shadow Crash. And I also popped my Seed Trinket, so this stuff just melts. Notice that little blue swirl that indicates where the ads are going to spawn. And that's just to, you know, it's just good to have the boss in between you and where the ads spawn and try and maximize your cleave damage here. Okay, I'm using a uh, power word shield to help me zoom around. I'm also using feathers. You barely see them, but I am placing them and consuming them right away. There's the first ad. Look how slow that cast is. I use my macro to target and instantly interrupt it. And sometimes the pathing's weird. They go off into space, like they kind of walk around weird. Yeah, like where's it going? No idea. So I'm saving my seed for like a moment where there's a lot of ads. Uh, it's not worth popping right now, so I'm just gonna wait. There's no urgency in interrupting that cast either. Like you can wait as long as you're in a good position. Okay, chasing guy goes immune. And now we go back to a burn phase on the boss again. You really wanna try and get the boss down as much as you can. I didn't really do that much damage to him because I was just focusing on mechanics but like all these mage towers uh, it's about endurance it's not really about your damage uh, so much Get in yellow okay there's the first rune and this is what I'm talking about when I say don't go in too early this is probably not a great example but uh, I had many wipes where I went to the zone too early and the adds went straight in there and killed me So like, yeah, these ads are just melting. It's crazy. 
So even though that guy, the melee guy who one shots is like right there in my face, I have Psychic Scream so I know that at any point I can just fear him away. So like right here is a good example where, there we go, I feared just to get them away from everybody. And I waited to get into that void zone because I didn't need to hop in until the last second. So the prio is soak, soak the voids, then kill the hands, and that's really the prio if you think like that. So again, I'm not even thinking about what phase I'm in right now. All I know is that the uh, chasing guy is really close to death, and when he dies, the boss gets like a buff, so I'm being cognizant of that. He's at a really low health percentage, so... He's very close to dying. Interrupt. So yeah, the the you're gonna kind of panic when you see that second cast go because you don't have an interrupt for that second hand, but it's just faster to kill it. So just think about killing it. Again, the ads are coming and I have to soak, but I have a psychic scream ready and waiting. I completely forgot to mention that, yeah, like once the uh, chasing guy died, I popped bloodlust in my potion. Or drums, rather. At this point, I've been through this phase many times and I, I know I take damage, so I'm focusing on healing myself. I'm just trying to do anything I can to get my health back. I dip really low right there. So I'm really being kept alive by Devouring Plague and Power Word Shield. And I, I, I try to pop mind games when I can, but at this point, I was thinking, should I pop mind games? But I look now, it's so close to death, just freaking kill it. And that was it. That was pretty tricky. So that's it guys. Uh, hopefully that helps somebody out there. Again, I really just made this because I didn't find the WoW guide, the WoW talent setup helpful at all. Uh, I don't really know what it was trying to accomplish, but hopefully I told you something that might help you. Uh, again, I don't think my build was quite conventional and I'm not a Shadow Priest main. I haven't played Shadow Priest since Dragon Soul. Um, but you know, I'm familiar with the class and I, I kind of get how it works. Uh, and that is it. It worked for me. So. Good luck guys, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks for watching.